What's going on everybody? LK here, back at it again with another video. And today, let's talk about DB Easy, right? So, every fighting game, love it or hate it, they kind of have like their shit talk nickname for it, like Mashy Blood or Sleep Fighter or like Injustice. Like every game has one, right? And Dragon Ball, DBFC, DB Easy. Pretty nice smooth little just change one letter right not that bad but personally right i played a bunch of games at this point like i went from melty to blaze blue to p4 to gg and now this right so and then multiple iterations of each one as i moved through right so i played a bunch of games competitively not even talking about the things i tried right and over time i noticed uh Starting GG, I kind of started approaching names as uh, one of the things I try to figure out is what does the game keep presenting to you as an overall problem? Like, what is a problem for every character in the game or almost every character in the game? Uh, or another way where this is, what is hard about the fucking game, right? So Dragon Ball actually has a few of these points, right? A few of these points. What is hard about Dragon Ball Fighters? What is hard about Dragon Ball Fighters? One is we're already here. One, and you can tell by, especially uh like when I talked about team building and stuff, and I see this as dreams and all the time too. What fucking team do you play in the game? That is the first problem. And the reason why it's a problem is because every character has one assist. It goes all the way back to the video I made about why, like, Tournament players that you know, including myself, change teams often-ish because nobody knows what the fuck to play. <laughs> That's it. You don't know what to play. Every assist does one specific thing and everything has a counter. So you're always trying to figure out like what you're trying to do. So it's already from the jump. The immediate problem is what team do you pick? In a one versus one fighter, you just pick a character. If you like the summoner, you pick the summoner. If you like to be a tier horror, you pick top tier. If you like shoto characters, you pick the main character. Easy peasy. But in this game, you can't do that. Problem number one is the character select screen. Problem number two. Problem number two. And especially if you've been following the game, watching tournaments, watching how people play the game, you might not know without a hint, but once you see it, you'll be like, uh-huh. Problem number two is something about the neutral game. So the neutral game itself presents a lot of problems, right? So problem number two is our good friend, the Super Dash. The Super Dash. So when the game came out, it was like annoying, but it's like, oh, just 2H Super Dash, blah, blah, blah. But over time, people have like built out ways to deal with super dash and ways to use super dash now overall in the scope of the game super dash is one of the problems you have to deal with in the game it is strong and weak simultaneously but it's always present that's the main thing it's always present and it's always something you have to consider and something you have to build strategy around like no matter what no matter how good or bad they are it's always there and it can always do something or do nothing. It just depends on how you build stuff out. As an example, uh, you can talk about what I made a video on this previously is uh, the point blank close range super dash, the one that adds or completes the close range option set to fall, fall, do nothing, fall, super dash. You can't usually cover all three, right? You have to wait for the super dash, battle some fall, do stuff. If you if you try to hit the fall, they super dash and hit you, right? There's a lot of situations with super dash like that. So, of course, I made a whole video about that one. So, instead of doing that, I'm going to show you another one. This is actually one I'm trying to deal with right now uh, on my own. So, it is... Okay. Um, is this a good way of doing it? There we go. Okay. So, let's say I'm moving, right? This is pretty, you know, moving forward, jumping. Like, pretty common. So the opponent does, okay, 
I've gotten actually hit by that many times for a couple of reasons, but the main reason, it's kind of hard to see here, is that uh, they're moving forward, and when you super dash, you stop and start the tracking. So when you're moving here, I expect, me personally, I expect that I have to switch my guards and going over them, and then the super dash screws it up and appears on the original side, and I get hit, right? Kind of hard to deal with. Kind of actually hard to deal with. Doesn't come up a lot, but comes up more than I would like. Uh, there's a lot of little things like that with Super Dash. It's not the best mechanic in the world, but it definitely like helps a lot in certain other aspects of the game. It's just a problem that you and I both need to solve if you want to play the game. Another bigger issue, I think, is actually revolves around this. This, the float the float so it's not the float itself that is an issue it's that there actually are not that many anti-air tools in the game so if you recall I made an assist uh, tier list pretty recently and I really highly rate assists that hit airborne so like in this case like my boy trunks right my boy trunks here, like GT, anyone that goes up or has like an up explosion or like a DP or something, I really like because it stops jumps. It helps you bring people down. If you don't have a good way to bring people down safely, you have to take risks to bring them down. Basically, if you don't have an assist that can help you bring them down to the ground, then you have to go to this very fun range where they can fall or call their assist or super dash or do a key blast or do a project there's too many things you can do there's no way you're going to know all the time right if you use an assist in this situation to bring them down then it becomes much easier and honestly even if you miss it's okay like at least you try to address the situation without taking a major risk this kind of goes back into team building because like some people think like oh let's say like you really like mix heavy like you want to play like Kibu go tanks and then like Vegeta or something you might actually have way more problems with this than someone who has like a more balanced neutral team that can like bring them down and get their turn that's another like pretty big thing about the game you might be like okay this is a perfect place to use super dash but the developer is actually pretty carefully balanced super dash and when you block super dash in the air there's not really that much extra block stun compared to like normal attacks or assists so you really need either like a character that has a move that does it of course if you, if you watch me play trunks you'd be very familiar with me doing this multiple times when people are jumping away like when people are running away i'm like get down here get down here okay, right? but it depends on your character assists blah 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 blah, blah. So next is a little bit less to do with neutral and more about attacking. So one thing about this game is you can only jump cancel if you hit somebody or in sparking. So for the most part, nobody has plus on block moves and they nerfed a lot of moves that fail to vanish. Like Bardock has one, but it costs two bars. This other one requires you to jump. Uh, this character, GT, has two, right? You can do this. Right? That is that gels the advantage, but he has no airtight moves into reverse common. And of course he has a beam, but he has no airtight moves into his beam. Right? SSJ, they still let him keep this. Okay. His auto combo gels into Kamehameha, which gels the advantage. Okay. That's extremely rare in the game though. Yamcha is another character that two bars for plus two, right? So the point is most characters don't have moves that are plus, right? If they do have a move as plus, there's always some type of caveat, like Tyrant Lancer, there's a gap, you can reflect, he could dice roll you, but you could mash, whatever, and Yamcha, he has a plus four move, but you could reflect that on reaction, right? So, building offense is kind of hard alone, and you are really reliant on assist for your offense. What does this mean? You can't really vary your offense so much without assists. Like, uh, you rely a lot on like spacing and conditioning, which is like good and bad, right? Uh, you basically can't enforce a turn very heavily without an assist. 
anything you want to do extra is overextending slash they need to respect you, you need to make them respect you. So you have to find a way to build offense safely, find a way to get cues on what they're going to do, which leads us to the next thing, which is this game, the passive defensive options have no cues, right? So when, what, what do I mean by this? So in some anime games, right, like Plays Blue, Guilty Gear, there's instant block and faultless defense. And people want these type of mechanics in this game. One thing about those mechanics, so the direct thing, the direct uh, application of those things is that if you instant block, you get frame advantage, uh, you get like to recover faster from block zone. If you faultless defense, you push them away. But there's also something that the attacker gets. The attacker can see you instant block, the attacker can see you faultless defense. So they could actually build offense around that and take advantage of you relying on those things, right? In this game, the the main thing you get is guard cancel, guard cancel options. So things like like that, right? That's the main thing the game gives you besides outright stand or crouch block. So you have to really understand people's tendencies to understand why they guard certain ways and like why things come out when they do. And you can't rely on passive mechanics for it. You have to literally re rely on their guard state or like on seeing them with buttons. Simple example of this would be, let's make a quick recording. A simple, simple example of this would be, let's turn off the guard cancel while we're at it. Uh, actually, to make it more clear. So, if you play the game at all, you pretty much know what this is. Okay. Right? And we know, if you play the game, you know this jab came out because I was trying to attack the dragon rush. So you don't really get cues from passive situations generally, you get them from more active direct situations. Which brings us to another big problem that you have to solve slash deal with in Dragon Ball. Solve more than anything else. This ties in kind of to something that I will talk about, but basically you always get combos. You always, always get combos from all hits. It is quite reliable that you get some type of combo off your hit, right? In fighting games, it really varies uh, whether or not you get a full combo or not off a hit. Now, the games where you tend to get full combos all the time, uh, they tend to be more explosive games, and Dragon Ball is kind of like that too. It's really explosive, momentum heavy, blah, blah, blah. But the main thing is that risk return is really, really out of control in this game. So people are willing to take big, 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 big risks in the game because the game gives you really, really big returns if you're right. Between there being no passive or very little passive, truly passive defensive options, and the return being so high, uh, you just kind of have to play around like those things and play around people doing stuff like that, right? So take like, as an aside, something I said before, Defense is really strong in this game, and it is. Like, the defensive options the game gives you are very strong, but for the most part, they generally also have, like, the big risk-return thing aside to it. The biggest example of this is, of course, Reflect. Reflect is one of the best defensive options in the game. It's definitely risky. Like, if you... Let's turn on our good old friend, our cancel Reflect. So, if you wait for that... And you punish, it's such a big risk, it's gonna do so much damage. <laughs> Unless my my 5 H burst, but in like actual matches, like my BNB, my BNB into like baiting your reflect is death. Like you will die. You will take about 75% per whiffing reflect and being punished by immediate. But if you're right, you almost always get some type of combo, and now I'm in the corner, and now I'm getting punished. Risk return is really extreme in this game, and what ends up happening, and think about it when you watch people play, and especially like your mid, mid-high 
level players, right? Look at the kind of things they try to do on defense and on offense too. Uh, think about when people do stuff like why do people why do people do stuff like this? Think about this. People do this like this. That has come up. That has been done to me in tournament. You've seen that done in tournament. Why? 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 Risk return. They thought. They thought. You were going to do something, and they were willing to take the risk. This move is minus. You can take your turn. If you take your turn, boom. Right? The risk return is kind of crazy, and it moves into the kind of like gambling part of the game, how how the game is like built out. And what I mean is, between the, like, the risk return thing, right? One thing that's quite purposely done is the frame advantage in the game is built to encourage this to a lot of moves like a lot of characters have moves are like minus four, minus five, this is minus five, this, this is minus five, right? So a lot of characters have moves that are like they're not punishable, but they're not safe. And this is it technically is in the defender's favor, but it's not like the attacking player doesn't have options. How many people, and you could definitely put this in the comments, how many people have gotten owned up by that, right? Like, oh, he's minus two, swing, oh, you're dead, right? Pretty big rate, like if you don't do, if you just sit there, goodbye, but if you press a button, goodbye to you, right? Because there's so many moves that are like minus two, minus four, minus five, plus two. Because there's a lot of like situations like that, the game puts you in a lot of these small RPS situations or weighted RPS situation where it's like, instead of like a straight up like 50-50, let's say, to simplify it to its core, instead of straight up 50-50, instead it becomes like a 60-40 type of RPS where the opponent technically is more advantage than you, but you can still do something if you're willing to do it and take that risk and get the damage. Which leads us to another thing that's difficult about the game. So the game is overall designed to be a two touch game, but it's not always the case, right? You're not always gonna kill people in two touches. So if you combine this heavy risk return, right? With how the frame advantage is built and how people are willing to like gamble on risk and how much reward you get when you're right. Take this next thing too. You don't die for doing things wrong. So think about this. And this actually, again, is gonna bring me to probably like the last main point, I guess. But consider consider this. So let's say let's say you do with this reflect. Let's say you do do this. Let's say you do that, okay. So we're gonna pretend that Goku does this. So I'm gonna punish you. Aha, I'm gonna punish you. So you take about 4,000 damage and you're mid screen now. And we just keep on playing, right? So in a typical fighting game, if you do something wrong, it's not that you're dead just from the punish, but you get put into a really, really bad situation. In this game, you're not necessarily going to be in a bad situation. You might, you might be, depending on the character, like, like let's say, uh, hmm. let's say, like Bardock, like Bardock, if he punishes your reflect, you know, like uh, he he can he can put you in the corner, he can put you in the corner, okay, we'll free you if he has the bar. Like that sucks, you know. Like you could be in a bad spot. You might not be in an awful spot, but it's a, not a great spot, right? Depends on the character. But the main thing is like you might not necessarily be put in the worst situation. The game is built so that like, the worst situations, and I had to rank them, is probably, death is the absolute worst. And uh, I'll explain that in a little bit. Second would probably be snap and level three. They're kind of even to me. After that is like slide down the corner. After that is slide down the screen. Then soft downs, right? Once you get to sli uh, slide knockdowns, you can kind of RPS slide knockdowns too, especially if they don't have an assist. So the only way you can really play safely around slide downs is if you have a character like Gotenks, like Piccolo, like Janemba, um, who can cover the assists without, uh, cover the knockdown without assists with some move that they have, or you have an assist yourself, right? 
death is the worst situation because it makes your risk have the maximum punishment. And this is why you see at high level play now, uh, especially like the Goichi team, the team I'm playing on the right, one of the reasons why it's so severe is that the punishment is so severe that there are many cases where the team will just kill you, like dump all the resources and kill you for gambling, where some other teams might not be able to do that. They might be able to put you in one of the other situations, like a level 3 could be really bad, depending on the character, how much life you have, blah blah blah. Snap is bad, but it's not bad for the character who took the risk, right? You'd have to be successful on the snap, and then bring in the original character and finish them off. So it's kind of like delaying your payoff, rather than like just instantly putting you in a bad spot. So since you can't usually go the extreme and put people in the worst situation, people are willing to keep on taking those gambles, and you have to kind of play through that. So the last thing I want to talk about is actually the downs, the knockdown system. So the knockdown system in this game, like I said, if you have to, if I have to rank the punishment, because I would, uh, I would think it would be fair to line up, right? Line up knockdowns with punishment. So the worst thing, of course, is that you fucking die. Like, you do some stupid shit, you do this, I'm like, ah, ah, you scrub, goodbye. Maybe I won't say you're a scrub. In my head, I'm like, ah, ah, okay, whatever. So I kill you, right? The second worst thing that could happen is tied, right? The second worst thing is they snap you or they level three you, right? Why? Because your options are very limited, right? Snap is like you have no options pretty much, or pretty much snap, uh, spark, excuse me. And level three, you know, you can gamble on reflecting or level three stuff, but like, like I said, if you're wrong on those things, it's, it's lights out. After that would be your corner slide down, the mid screen slide down, then soft downs. Okay. Why, why? What is up with slide down? So the main thing is you have so much control of your knockdown in this game, what you could do. When you get slide knockdown, you have delayed down tech, right? So you can you, you literally you really sleep, right? Stay there. Neutral tech, which gives you your reflect or whatever, and up tech. And back tech. But in the corner, you back tech, neutral tech, same thing. The main thing is the delay down and that the neutral tech and up tech are pretty much at the same timing. So basically it's impossible for one character to cover everything. They need an assist. And even if they have a way to cover many options, you still have options to like push them off. So you can still like try to gamble your way out of it. It can be hard, but like usually just waiting on the ground or just trying to neutral tech and reflect will get you out of most stuff. If, if they're bad at setups, you can literally just up tech. Some people, a really common thing last year was people literally taking the hit on up tech safe jumps. So that's why like a lot of the safe jumps have changed, like auto confirm if they hit you or like stuff like that, hit you into assist, stuff like that. Now the difference is mid screen, mid screen you also have the in place, AKA neutral tech, where you really just can't cover everything. This is, you might, you haven't really, you probably have not seen this too much. Yes, you probably have not seen that that much. As opposed to this. Oh, my bad. I did it again. As opposed to uh, this. Okay. That's like the standard. That's actually the standard tech in the game. In place, you have to input differently. So you have in place on top of all the other stuff. So usually the things that hit up and back tech do not hit in place tech. So you have another thing you have to worry about. That's why you see so many people put emphasis on like like these corner combos, right? Like corner carry, or say like a, a side swap. Why people care so much about side swap because it's way, way, way easier to control people in the corner than mid screen. If you, if you soft down them, then the world is yours. Like you have immediate neutral tech, immediate back tech, immediate up tech, delay down, delay uh, neutral, delay back, delay up. You have so many options. You just can't cover them all. So if you manage to slip out, you can slip out, reset to neutral, and go back to all the other stuff we talked about before. 
these are the only things you have to deal with and figure out how to be if you want to be successful consistently successful in this game the game the goal of the game i feel is to just like kind of ease beginners into fighting games by making it so that you're allowed to make mistakes you're allowed to make risks all the risks and mistakes that people usually make and like cut out of their game it's okay to make it this game and sometimes it's encouraged right so anyone can like anyone can win one like anyone can like just oops you set like you could just drop a game like anything can happen so you're kind of like playing as a system while trying to like build what you want to do and trying to like low-key deal with these things while you play right the game this is what makes the game hard overall how do you deal with these things before you get to actually like just like advanced play playing against people who are good at neutral and stuff these things are lined up with it as well that you have to deal with these are the things that i think at a base level make the game hard to play all right let me know what you think about that. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. How do you feel about that? Uh, like and subscribe if you feel like it. I might talk about some other stuff. I didn't actually cover like all the things I wanted to talk about. This video is a little bit lengthy. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Like and subscribe if you feel like it. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.